Ayan, hello. Ayan, I'm back. Can you hear me? Ayan. So let's, okay, share my screen and let's start. Yes, thank you so much, Shane. Okay. So once I, I think once I shared my screen, we can't see each other now. Okay, so let me have my full screen. Can you see it? I think it is now. Okay, you can see something now. So can you see my entire screen? So let's wait. Wait a moment. Yeah, I can see you now, but again, Thank you so much, Ayan. Let's invite more people right to our breakout session because it's time to go back to Manila, right? So we'll no longer play that song, but we'd like to welcome you to our Suyo Mano, Know Your Philippines, and of course, later, the Traveling Salakon. Right? So a uh, really, really good morning. Magandang umaga to all of you, right? Especially sa ating mga kababayan sa Pilipinas and good evening or what whatever is your time zone there in the USA. Good morning and a great and beautiful day. I am PJ Hernandez or maglakbay kasama ang ah, right with my salakot, right? So I'm the traveling salakot and I'll be your guide in this historic journey. So are you ready? And that's me, right? That's our passion project to promote Filipino culture and the arts and teach history through our great heritage, right? Maglakbay kasama ang traveling sa lakot. Okay, so kumusta? How are you? Okay, we'll get to know you siguro later. Pero sige, let's stop sharing muna. Ayan, magandang umaga from the Philippines. Ayan. So let's just wait. Ayan, let's vibe it again. Okay. So I hope you are well and okay because today we will go inside to one of the most historic places in the country. Of course, the Intramuros. Right? So especially to those who are not so you know, familiar with the place, it is an opportunity for you. Especially to our Phil Arms, right? Might be, uh, this is, if you'll go here to the Philippines, of course, you'll arrive at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport, right? And I think it's good to go here first to Manila, the capital, right? The seat of power and government, the seat of our centuries of history and culture. And everything can be encapsulated in this historic place of Intramuros. Right, and we can trace the entire history of Intramuros, of course, since the start of the colonial occupation, the Spanish occupation of the Philippines, right? By Miguel Lopez de Legazpi of the establishment of the city of Manila near the Rio de Pasig or the Pasig River. Can you see the Pasig River here? Right, so in this old Spanish map, and you can see the walled city. Right? From the word intra, meaning inside, muros, meaning wall. Intramuros is literally, the meaning is, inside the walls. A city inside the walls. Right? And later on, it is will only be known as Manila. Everything outside is extra muros or outside the walls, like Binondo, where the Chinese mestizos or the Chinese will reside. Miguel Lopez de Legazpi will give a name to our newly established capital and will be the seat of power of the colonial uh, Spain in, of course, through its efforts all throughout the Philippines. Manila will be named Ciudad Insigne y Siempre Leal or the loyal and the distinguished city of Manila. And loyal she is because we will be right um, under dominion of the Spanish crown for 333 years. Is that loyalty? 
total submission, subjugation? Of course, you know our history. Right? So, look at this. Look at this recreation of a digital artist, J.R. Casals, when he tried to recreate the old Intramuros without the Manila Bay, without the Rojas Villibard. This might be, right, the image of the um, uh, the image of the uh, Intramuros or the the soon to be called Filipinas, right? Before, look at it. Look at, right? It is, of course, in foremost, why they need to create an Intramuros, not only as the seat of their power, but also, of course, to guard them from the pirates, from the Moors. That's the main purpose of this fortress, to create a really fortified nah, place Right for them to be protected from these intrusions. Look, even the invaders are afraid to other invaders. <laughs> but anyway, so this is the Intramuros made out of the finest stones in the Philippines. Came from my province of Bulacan, at least a two-hour drive away from the capital Manila, where you can find the adobe stones not of course the adobe photoshop now but adobe before are solid rocks right and they put it in the wall around what how how, how big and how heavy and how thick it is so it's the perfect material for the heavily guarded fortified place called intramuros look at intramuros before right Everything is guarded, right? It is, it is completely um, uh, surrounded by massive walls. So if you know some popular, you know, by kids, it's like the Basing say in um, the Avatar, the last airbender, right? The city that you can't enter because of the air kingdom. But anyway, you can see here some places, some parts of Intramuros before, right? A triangular place where they put, of course, um, artilleries where they will put yeah, guns, they, where they will put some armaments, right, to really secure the entire Intramuros. So uh, soldiers, right, colonial soldiers will be assigned there in that post and they will secure the area. So to ensure that no one will really enter Intramuros without permission. So here you can see it is named Lunette. That's why it's no surprising that the area in front of Intramuros will be sooner or later called Luneta. That would be the start of the etymology of the word Lunette going from the, one of the most famous parks in the Philippines, the Luneta. Or before, the Spaniards will call it Nueva Barrio, a new uh, a new barangay or bagum bayan from the word new bago right barrio bayan that's why it is the most famous place in the historical textbook where rizal was of course executed in that fateful day of the 30th of december nueva barrio right luneta so and of course to those who are faithful here, to those who are Catholics here, might be you're wondering why the feast of uh, why the feast of the Nazareno will start at the Quirino Grandstand now. Why not it starts with uh, the Quiapo Church, right? The easy answer there is the original home of the Black Nazarene is actually in Nueva Barrio. So it means that very place. Now we call it. The um, we call it now the Quirino Grandstand and Luneta or Bagumbayan is actually the place, is actually the barrio where the image of the Black Nazarene was originally installed after it stripped from Mexico from the trade of Gal the Galleon trade. All right, are we still okay? So, Mabuhay again, but in the Philippines, when we say right, Mabuhay, it's a really good reminder, right. To live life, continue life, right? Choose life. But if you're listening to us right now, so not only say mabuhay, 
but there's a really good kinaray a word kruhai. So when I say kruhai, uh, when I say babuhai, you need to respond kruhai. Especially to those who are watching to us in GMA Pinoy TV and in, of course, TFC or The Filipino Channel. So let's relieve the Filipino in you. When I say mabuhay, you need to chat or respond at least verbally, kruhay. Let's do that. Mabuhay, kruhay. Okay. We are just starting to our tour. And again, welcome to Intramuros. And now you can see now the present day aerial view of the majestic, of the distinguished and loyal city of Intramuros, right? So anyone who have been here, so let's have sharing Muna. Ayan, okay. So I hope you've been here to Intramuros. And let's check. Okay. Uh-huh. So this is really a good place to go. So that's the entire of course, we there's a lot of historical, you know, landmarks, of course, part of already of our great history in this area of the country. And one of which is, of course, the Manila Cathedral, right? Dubbed as the, the mother of all churches in the Philippines. Manila Cathedral, the first man, the first um church here in, in one of the first churches here in Intramuros, because later on you'll know what's the first, the oldest church in Intramuros, right? But here you'll see the mother of all churches now sanctified the Pope, declared as a cathedral, right? From the word cathedra, meaning the seat where the bishop, where the archbishop of a archdiocese in the Roman Catholic clergy will be seated, right? It, it literally means, cathedra means the chair, the seat of power but and manila will be alongside with colonialism uh, archdiocese of manila together with um with colonialism will of course do the three g's of the spanish occupation god gold glory god gold glory and the the catholic church before is still under the auspices of the archdiocese in Mexico, right? In in the cap in, in in Nueva España or Mexico, we will now call it Mexico soon, right? But here, right, the Catholic Church will also grow and will be part, will be ingrained to every Filipino life, right? So, the Manila Cathedral. This is to appreciate a night. Um, uh, a, a photo at night. This is the Plaza Mayor of the uh, Manila Cathedral. This is the original, right? This is from the Renacimiento Manila, and they are showing, of course, a digital art of what's supposed to be, right? Um, that's now the, uh, the the Manila Cathedral. But the first churches were burnt down, earthquake, and later on we'll talk about one of the massive destructions in Manila Cathedral. And that is, of course, World War II, the Battle of Manila. But here, right, Manila Cathedral is, of course, a religious site, especially for Catholics, where popes will visit the Philippines, right, where the, where the first encounter of the highest Catholic, you know, leader will meet the millions of Filipinos in this country. Pope Paul VI visited the Philippines Pope John Paul II twice and had his masses here. And of course, the most recent, right, Pope Francis, when he visited, right, um, in um, 2015, right, to really help those who are, to, to really console those who are affected by Typhoon Haiyan. But Manila Cathedral is not only a religious hall, a religious sanctuary, a temple. It's also where politics, it's also where prominence, right, will meet the Filipino people. This is like our, um, uh, where we anointed, right, where we anointed or crowned the, the kings and queens, like the abbey in Great Britain. This, this is like the um, national church or national cathedral in Washington. 
because this is where precedence will be laid down for a national mourning, besides from Malacanya. Like where Cory Aquino was, of course, laid in public viewing, right? When she died, a democracy icon in the Philippines. Of course, the women who toppled together with the people during the People Power Revolution in the Philippines, who toppled, right, the dictatorship of Ferdinand Edralin Marcos. Together with her, of course, in the very same cathedral, when the man, Jaime Cardinal Sin, will also uh, be buried in the crypt underneath. But Cory will be buried in Manila, uh, in, in, in Manila Memorial Cemetery, right? But um, Cardinal Sin will be buried. Another democracy icon. He's the one who called to the Filipinos to go out in Ensa during the Marcos, uh, during the the start of the people power revolution right so you can see that is uh, that's why manila cathedral is always part of the filipino historical you know narratives so let's just check in this video um the surrounding places around the intramuros specifically of the manila cathedral so you can see here now a aerial view of the Manila Cathedral and the Plaza Mayor, right? You can see, yeah, and the Manila Cathedral. Also, just like the old churches, when it is aerial view, it is in a cross, right? You'll see a cross-shaped church, right? Can you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's move a little bit as it goes around, and you'll see the other, the dome of the Manila Cathedral. And beside the Manila Cathedral is that huge building, is the Palacio del Gobernador, which we'll talk about next. Okay, are you still with us? Are we still mabuhay? So I hope you are with us, right? It's time for you to go back again to the Philippines someday. Ayan, and it's now zooming in to Palacio del Gobernador, right? The, they used to be the seat of power before Malacanang right, as the office of the Governor General of the Spanish colonial government in the Philippines, right? Can you see the majesty, the seal of the Castilian family of Spain is still there. Palacio del Gobernador or the Governor General of the Philippines, the highest, right, envoy of the Spanish occupation to the Philippines to manage the entire colony. Beside from it is the Ayuntamiento, City Hall, but later on would be also a legislative, right? This ayuntamiento was also totally destroyed, which we'll talk about later on again um, in the Battle of Manila. But here, it is now the Bureau of Treasury of the Philippines. And I am so happy that they restored this place. Look at the marble hall of the treasury. Wow, right? As if you are already in Europe, in Buckingham Palace, in Palacio Real in Madrid, or in other, um, you know, um, palaces in Europe, you can feel, right, the Spanish, right, the meeting of the Spanish-European designs here in the Philippines. Look at, wow, right, this room, right, the meeting room in the Bureau of Treasury, the, or the formerly Ayuntamiento. So look at that. So you can actually visit that, of course, someday. So it undergone a renovation. But did you know that in Intramuros, there's not only one churches. There are actually seven churches. The first church that we visited in this virtual tour is just the Manila Cathedral. But there are other six churches, like, of course, the other famous San Agustin. But sadly, we will talk about the, um, the bombing and the Battle of Manila. Sadly, there are only two remaining functioning churches in Tramuros. The Manila Cathedral and the San Agustin Church. Later on, the San Ignacio will just be a museum. But the only remaining functioning Catholic churches in Tramuros is San Agustin and the Manila Cathedral. You'll know later in our discussion what happened to the other churches after the Battle of Manila in 1945. But here, I'd like also to tell you that 
you know, there's a Filipino tradition every Holy Week where the Filipino Catholic faithful should visit at least seven churches. We call it Visita Iglesia. Let me repeat, right? Why there? Why do we need to visit seven churches in Holy Week? Because the origin of that is the seven churches in Intramuros. Right? It is Intramuros. It's not only the center of political life in the colonial era. It is our most holy ground, especially for the Catholics. A pilgrimage site. The Rome, where all roads lead to it. Intramuros, with all of its seven churches. And the oldest church amongst them all is created by the Order of St. Augustine or Osa, the San Agustin Church, right? And when I'll be there, here in San Agustin Church, right? It is the oldest church where if you will visit here, again in the Philippines, you can go inside to it and check its marvelous collections because the, money, because the San Agustin Church opened its doors for its San Agustin Museum. Right? But this is also one of the most famous uh, sites for weddings in the Philippines, right? Like every hour there's a wedding, specifically in the pre pandemic. But what is most amazing to San Agustin is its painted ceiling. Look at this as if you are seeing a carved wall, a carved ceiling, but actually you are just looking at a painted painted ceiling you're just looking at a painted ceiling like the Sistine Chapel look at this it looks like it was carved and there's a layering that there are of course um images at the top of the church it's all painting 3d just like the technique that Michel or Michelangelo used at the Sistine Chapel at the St. Peter's Basilica. Impressive, right? Impressive. Right? If you want to go to uh, the, the church, let's see, right? The San Agustin Museum. So in San Agustin Museum, right? You'll see the vast collection of the Augustinian friars, right? In the You'll see... Right, the, the vibe of its old convent, the priceless paintings, all paintings. Look at that halls. It's if you're entering Hogwarts, right? Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Look at the great, um, the great um, uh, stairs, right? And of course, the backyard of San Agustin. Of course, you'll see a lot of collections of paintings, right? Of course, talking about the long history of the Augustinians here in the Philippines. So if you really wanted, right, to have a vibe of the entire Filipino colonial occupation, especially in, during, the, uh, during the Spaniards, wow. now it is showing the, the very right, impressive, and carvings and paintings at the top of the um, San Agustin ceiling. The bells, right, and the formulas. Okay. Another church, our number three. Are you still there? I hope you're still mabuhay. Okay. I hope you're enjoying our virtual tour. So we're now to another church, the San Francisco Church, right? Sadly, the San Francisco Church will be totally devastated during the Battle of Manila. Now, it is now residing in the Mapua Institute of Technology. The former site of the church is now a school in Intramuros. So the Franciscan will transfer in an exclusive village in Forbes Park and, of course, in Batangas as their convent. Later on, you'll know what happened during the Battle of Manila. Another church, our fourth church, is the San Nicolas de Telentino. The home, remember what I'm talking about? The home of the Black Nazarene, the first home, right? It is uh, run by the Recoletos, but sadly now it is just part of the uh, side or a parking lot 
of the Manila Bulletin, one of the leading uh, newspaper in the country. Another church is the San Ignacio Church, right? Um, run by the run by the Jesuits. San Ignacio Church. It, there's an effort by the Intramuros administration to rebuild the San Ignacio Church, and they are now. This is now actually completed, but the photo is a bit outdated. It's now, uh, it's now um, completed, and we call it now the Intramuros Museum, where you can see a lot of ecclesiastical, sacred art, and of course, Spanish era art forms. Right? So, of course, you know that the Jesuits also run a school before, right? In Intramuros, they call it the Ateneo Municipal, where our soon-to-be-called national hero, Jose P. Rizal, will study. Where his happiest, you know, days as a student, he would argue in his letters. Unlike in other schools, he said, in UST, or the University of Santo Tomas, which is also, its roots, has its roots here in Intramuros. But Ateneo, later on, after the war, will also transfer to its new home in Quezon City, in the Loyola Heights, right? Look at this uh, impressive, very modern um, uh, Church of the Zoo, right? At the Ateneo de Manila University. The Dominicans also have their own church. In the, Remember, there are seven churches in Tramuros. Santo Domingo Church, right? Run by the Dominicans. Now, it's a... B, uh, it's now a bank in Intramuros, a, a BPI, Bank of the Philippine Islands, Santo Domingo Church and Convent. So it was also totally destroyed during the World War II Battle of Manila. But the Santo Domingo Church is so famous, especially to the people living in Intramuros during the colonial era because of the Our Lady of Ilanabal. A Catholic Marian image, right, where they believe that she interceded between the Battle of Lanabal, between Manila, uh, between the Spaniards and the Dutch in the Manila Bay. The Dutch is, of course, the Netherlands is trying to occupy the Philippines during the eight, uh, the seven or the eight year war in Europe from trying to capture it from the Spaniards to seize its control. But the Filipinos help the Spaniards. It's colonizers. We help our colonizers to defend their lands from the Dutch. And many of the crew said their prayers and asked for intercession to the Our Lady of Lanaval. And lo and behold, they won against the Dutch. From then on, that story will be passed on. That's why the Our Lady of Lanaval will be really... Uh, a, a revered image, right, for the Filipinos. And there's a large procession in Intramuros before of the image of the Our Lady of Lanabal. But again, after the war, the, the, the Santo Domingo Church and the Dominicans will transfer from Intramuros to Quezon City. So that is where, this is an old image, right, of the procession of Lanabal in Intramuros. And of course, the Dominicans will also create a school and it will be now known as the UST. It will also be bombarded, destroyed during the war and UST will transfer to its new home in España, Manila, right? Where it's famous, right? UST main, main building result, right? So are you enjoying? Are you now missing Manila? Are you still there with us? Especially those who are watching to the Filipino channel or TFC and GMA Pinoy TV, Mabuhay! So another church is the Lourdes Church, right? Sadly, now it's a uh, antique shop. It's, uh, it's again totally destroyed, was destroyed during the Battle of Manila and also Ilustrado, a a good food if you want to eat there in Intramuros. Right? Can you see? Those are the seven churches in Intramuros. So it means everything is religious during the colonial life in Intramuros, right? And if you will see, right? If you will also check, right? 
uh, Filipinos, especially, right, those who will marry, right, the Spaniards, those the Spanish born in the Philippines. We have insulares, peninsulares, the Creoles, the Spanish mestizos, right, will live in Intramuros, right, and they will have the Bahay na Bato. The first time that the Philippines will have a stone houses. At the top, it's totally wood. One of example is this, right? The Casa Barbara, right? Where you can have... This is just beside. Beside, um, beside San Agustin Church. Filipinos during that time will also ascribe to European way of life. It will start to wear this camisa, this barong, right? And it will be called Barong Tagalog, right? So, and that would be, right, the, the stature, right? The, the face of a Spanish um, um, elite family. Then later on, Filipinos who will be scanned, uh, those who will study abroad will be called Ilustrado, right? People who are, who, who reach enlightenment, studied enlightenment. Look, right? So those are just, they will be called Balintawak, right? Barot Saya for the women. So you can see the Barong Tagalog. There's also another story where ba Barong Tagalog, especially for the poor, is so transparent. Because at least for the Guardia Civil or the Spanish guards, we'll see if you're hiding a knife, a bolo, a gun, right? Para when inspection happens, he he knows already what you are you trying to hide from him or all right can you see so they love paintings also before one of it one of those is the so-called letras y figuras letras y figuras is a painting of for the elites where you the painter will create a painting not of yourself unlike this right but of your name. That's why it is letras y figuras. Letters and figures. Can you see? Manuel Miramon. That's the owner of the painting. Can you say the M-A-N, right? U-E-L. But it is composed of human figures. Right? Right? And of course, um, um, the uh, most famous, Fort Santiago. Where, of course... Um, during the apex summit in the philippines where the ladies the first ladies of the different head of states of the apex uh participating countries visited the fort santiago right the fort right so look at now the present day fort santiago so of course they renovated it the intramuros administration make it more appealing right so Pond, yeah, so you'll see the overview. This is where Fort Santiago, right, is the actually the former place, the former location of the palace, right? The palace of, uh, I mean, not the palace, but the house of Raja Suleiman, right? The Raja of Manila. So... Here, of course, there's an influence of the Spanish uh, American, the Plaza Moriones. Oops. So, but you can see at night there's a really good vibe there at the a really good vibe in the inside, right? The Fort Santiago. So another also feature of, of Intramuros is this, right? You can see this, um, if this is the garrison where they, of course, the Fort Santiago is like the, not only a prison cell where, of course, uh, uh, Jose Rizal were also used to be detained, it's also where the soldiers, right, uh, will be trained, the Spanish soldiers, the Guardia Civil will be trained, right? So that's why it has black, vast yeah, lands. Also here, you'll see the Puerta San Diego where some of the notorious prisoners will be put, especially during the Japanese occupation. So look at the, um, the San Diego. Okay, for a moment. Let's see the video of the San Diego. 
Okay. I think we lost it. For okay, so it's not here, but here. Okay, so look at it, right? The the sadly it's thick walls. So who can really right um uh go out of this is like Alcatraz, right? Of during the Spanish occupation era. Intramuros, right, will endure right for uh, so long right until the americans will also occupy the philippines americans will redesign manila it will expand manila outside intramuros when the when the americans occupy the philippines they will start to create buildings like this we call it a neoclassical buildings the former legislative and government buildings are now museums like this the national museum of fine arts the National Museum of Natural History, Anthropology, even the Manila City Hall, just right outside Intramuros was created during the American occupation because the Americans will create this new plan for, for the capital of Manila, the Burnham Plan. Look at the Burnham Plan, right? This is the original plan. This is an old photo of the lunette or the luneta outside, diba? outside Intramuros, you'll see that it looks like the federal design of, or the Washington, right? The Capitol Hill. Why? Because the Americans wanted to pattern, right? Uh, its new colonial, its new colony, right? Just like the Washington. Look at the Burnham Park in, not from, architect Daniel Burnham, named after him, the one who designed Manila after, after the Spanish occupation. It looks like the central, the central park in New York. Can you see? But when the Spanish, uh, but when the Japanese um, was able to capture the Philippines during, um, during around 1941, yeah, because of its dream of Asia for Asia and the um, co-prosperity sphere, right? The greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere, it was able to successfully occupy the Philippines, especially when it, of course, um, when it successfully um, occupied Bataan, the last stronghold of the Americans, Right? The Japanese forces take Cebu and in their country. From April 5 to 11, Bataan fell. And what's the relationship of this to Manila and to Intramuros? Manila will be declared open city for the Japanese. Right? So here, in the Japanese occupation, of course, Filipinos will also not only accept them, but they will start to do guerrilla movement. So what's the relationship of, of this, of that long story to Intramuros? Why? Because the American and Japanese occupation of the Philippines has an important story, backstory to what will happen to, to Intramuros on the fateful month of February 3 to March 3 of 1945, when Douglas MacArthur vowed that he will return. He returned, thank God. And he and the Filipino fighters will try to reclaim Manila. And for one month, Manila will be a battlefield. Douglas MacArthur will, as you can see in the photo on October 20, 1944, but Manila will enter a war. Look at this powerful photo. American Yusafe soldiers and Filipino soldiers are in front of a heavily destroyed San Agustin Church. A lot of bullets, a lot of shrapnels, right? A lot of debris because it's the time, right, of um, where the Japanese is trying to hold still Manila, right? And here, uh, you can see the devastation. That's it, oh. Can you see? This is the photo of a priest trying to say a mass in front of the heavily... Um, destroyed San Agustin and this one this is the San Agustin right now look at the Fort Santiago can you still remember this one this magnificent um, uh, uh, design at uh, the gate the puerta right of the of the Fort Santiago a tank right entered it during the war 
Everything in Intramuros was totally destroyed. Look at Manila. This is Manila during the war. Gone. The glory, right, of Intramuros flattened. Ash. All the three centuries of history in just one month blown away, forgotten. Look at also the structures outside Intramuros, like the uh, legislative building, down the National Museum. Ah, right? When you see these photos, you just can't imagine how terrible it is. But of course, later on, the Philippines will declare, finally, with the help of the Americans, an independence, peace regained from the Japanese forces. And Manila... The Filipinos will never forget of what happened during the time in during the time in that era or in that uh, fateful month, and especially the Japanese occupation. They created this statue called the Memorare de Manila, the memory of the Manila in 1945. Here, the it was noted, right? It was um written by national artist Nick Joaquin for literature when he said in those marble these lines this memorial is dedicated to those innocent victims of war many of whom went nameless and unknown to a common grave or never even knew a grave at all their bodies having been consumed by fire or crushed to dust beneath the rubble of ruins. Let this be monument, be a gravestone for each and every one of the over 100,000 men, women, children, infants killed in Manila during its battle for liberation. February 3 to March 3 of 1945. We have never forgotten them, nor shall we ever forget. May they rest in peace as part of the sacred ground of this city, the Manila of our affection, inaugurated February 8, 1995, the Memorare of Manila. It's also, the Memorare of Manila seems like also the tombstone of the old Spanish splendor of Manila because Manila, because Intramuros will enter a years of decay, decades of neglect, decades of sadly you know, where shanties will be put, where it is no longer preserved, intramuros will be forgotten. As new cities in, in the in different parts of the Philippines will rise. But thankfully, the intramuros administration was established and trying to revive the glory, the splendor, the pomp, the history, the heritage of this site of intramuros in Manila. When you come to visit, when you go home again to the Philippines, let us go back, right, through history in this historic place of Intramuros. Inside the Intramuros, well, you can tell the entire history of the Philippines. So I hope you had a really good, Ayan, um, enjoyable discussion with me with a very quick, you know, uh, in just an hour, we just tried to encapsulate a really hundreds of years of history of Intramuros. Thank you so much, right, for joining me. Again, I'm the traveling Salakot, PJ Hernandez. Mabuhay, kruhay. Thank you. If you have questions, we can have discussion. Ayan. Thank you so much. Ayan. Thank you. So might be we can open some questions or if you want to visit the Philippines, just call us at Suyomano. This is actually, this is not a job. It's a passion project. So it means we're, do, we're really doing this for free, specifically for students because we wanted them to regain, right? To, to know our history again, right? To, we use our walking tours, not, yeah, we need food on our table, but 
they say sometimes we need to feed also our soul. The soul of an individual and the soul of a nation. Right? Our dear Phil Arms, right, who are watching to us, right? It's time for you to really go back to your roots. To remember that cliche na of the Filipinos, ang hindi marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay hindi makakarating sa paroroonan. So, again, so that's us. So, find us when everything is... Uh, 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 find us here in Manila when everything is already okay na. Right? So, we, we will be glad to tour you, not only to Intramuros, but to the National Museums. Let's talk about our history. Right? History is continually. Especially now that we are... That we are... Uh, in, the, in the Philippines, we are experiencing massive historical distortion, historical revisionism. So it's important for people to know credible um, uh, historical sources. Historical sources that are not used for political gains, right? To change history, to change narratives. So, Ayan, thank you. Might be you have questions. Thank you, thank you so much. Especially to our viewers at TFC and GMA Pinoy TV. Thank, thank you, Miss Sabrina. Thank you, Miss Jean. Ayan. Thank you. Ayan. Miss Sabrina, not sure if I missed this, but if you could only pick one to recommend, which uh, site would it be? Wow! Intramuros is like uh, <laughs> it's it's like a if I if I will if I'll if I can um compare it it's like the Disney Disneyland of historical places uh thank you so much Miss Jean it's like the uh Disney <laughs> Disneyland of historical places in the Philippines um because it would take you half day only if you will go to um San Agustin Museum right it's uh, why if you really wanted to 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 roam around right the entire right um uh san agustin would also be the best because it's not only a church it's re if you're not really a catholic or religious but still if you wanted to appreciate arts and history uh san agustin church because it has a good collection of ano another one if you want a leisure good walk it's the fort santiago Right where you will see the other part of Pasig River, you'll see the Binondo, right? Where the Chinese remember my storytelling a while ago, why it is called Extramuros. Everyone who is residing outside the wall are the Chinese, the Filipinos. That's why it's good to go in Fort Santiago because when you walk up to that one part of the of Fort Santiago, you'll see the other end of the bank of the Pasig River. So, and literally, the canons of Fort Santiago, the canons and the armaments of the armaments of um of the old Spanish guards are are pointing to Binondo. Why? Because the Chinese before. Uh, I'm now entering a new story. The Chinese before tried to conspire with the Filipinos to revolt against the Spaniards. So did you know that? So even though China is not good to Chinese government, not Chinese people. Now the Chinese communist government is trying to is not good with us right now. But before we are hand in hand trying to topple to remove the Spaniards in the Philippines. Starting from that day on, all the cannons are now facing Binondo. So when you go there, you'll see all the cannons are facing Binondo or the or the Chinatown, the oldest Chinatown in the world. So that's here in the Philippines. So can you see all the history of the Filipinos before, right now, and and might be a prediction of the future, right? So uh, that's the good places if you'll go to Intramuros, right? Um, I, we're so happy that um, Manila is trying to be now a heritage city, right? Trying to regain it's supposed to be spot in the world. It should be lined with Paris, with, with New York, with Berlin, right? With Barcelona. Because we have a lot to offer. We just need to clean up the city. <laughs> and we need more people who will really give credible um, information to the site. So we're so excited to see you here someday, right? In the, here in the Philippines. Thank you for joining the 
Palprocon, and we are from Suyumano and the Traveling Salakon. Do you have more questions, queries? Ayan. As they say in the Philippines, we ended it early because some people need to cook. It's already lunchtime. <laughs> Magandang tanghali. Ayan. Ayan. Oh, thank you, Miss. Ayan. Yes, we'll love to see you also. Ayan. Next time here in the Philippines. Okay, so I think the tech can also, if we don't have any more questions, thank you so much for joining our session this uh, morning. Uh, and we it, it, hopefully next time we can do more interactive because sadly I can't see you and sometimes you can't talk. But next time let's have a session where we can have really, you know, a kwentuhan lang ayan, about Filipino culture history. Bring your kids specifically. That's what Suyomano is trying to do to educate the second and third generation Filipinos abroad in Europe and America to teach them how to speak Tagalog, Filipino. <laughs> right? Wag niyo po sana kalimutang turuan ng inyong magi mga anak o magiging anak pamangkin. Ayan, alam niyo po ba pa ba yung mga salitang yon? Uh, per uh, asking permission to speak in our own language. Ayan, Filipino. Alam nyo pa po ba yun? Pamangkin, pinsan, tito, tita, nanay, tatay. So, as simple as that, we are teaching them again to, because language is the gateway to the culture. If you don't know the language, it's hard for you to understand our culture. Ayan. Thank you so much. Again, this is the Traveling Salakot and Suyumano. Mabuhay, Kruhay. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, everybody. God bless us. See you in the Philippines someday. Yeah. How, how we...